So joining us now from Chicago, co-founder and publisher of Real Clear Politics, Tom Bevan. And Tom, I'm going to read uh, from the Washington Post in just a second a piece written by Fred Hyatt. But first, give us a sense of races where Republicans are doing well, perhaps Senate races. Uh, I'm sorry, Mika, say that again. I didn't quite hear you. What, let's talk about the Senate races where Republicans are actually possibly doing okay. Are there any, and which ones are there? <laughs> where Republicans are doing okay. Marco Rubio is doing okay. Florida. Um, yeah, Rob Portman still uh, is doing very well in Ohio. Ohio. Uh, Pat Toomey's ahead by a little bit in Pennsylvania. Mm -hmm. um, and that is North about Carolina? North Carolina. Richard Burr's up about two, two and a half points there. Okay. So um, the places where Republicans are, are really struggling now, um, Kelly Ayotte, we had a poll come out that showed her way behind. That might be a bit of an outlier. We're waiting for more data up there. Um, and Joe Heck in Nevada, he was leading that race. He's now fallen behind right. by a couple of points, in part, I think, because he was one of those people who went right. out and said, look, I'm, you know, can't vote for Trump. And if Trump's, you know, if he loses Trump supporters, you know, hence, hence him falling behind by a couple of points. So, um, and then you've got Missouri, which is a race that Missouri, isn't getting a lot of attention, but that, that is a very close race. And that would be devastating for Republicans if, if Roy Blunt does not uh, win that, so win that seat. So here's why I ask. Fred Hyatt writes in the Washington Post this, believe uh, Rubio post Trump at your own risk. And he says in part this, we need to have moral clarity regarding what we stand for and why, Rubio said in a speech two years ago. This means reinforcing our alliances. It means resisting efforts by rising and resurgent powers to subjugate their neighbors. It means being unabashed in our support for the spread of economic and political freedom. It hardly needs saying that Trump's positions and inclinations are in direct conflict with every single component of that statement. No one who truly believed those words could also believe Trump belongs in the White House. Rubio may win re-election. If so, he no doubt will go on churning out fine-sounding statements about moral clarity, alliances, and the spread of economic and political freedom. Many of them may be on target, but every one of those statements will carry an invisible asterisk. Caution, caution, this is the view of a man who voted for Donald Trump. Believe him at your own risk. And Tom, how does that not apply to a lot of candidates right now? And also people like Paul Ryan, who's seen as like a potential for 2020. Well, look, this is the big problem for Republicans. I mean, you've got you've got tens of millions of voters who voted for Donald Trump in the primary who disagree with that, who who support Donald Trump on the question of trade, on the question of, you know, him saying that our foreign policy has been a, a disastrous, both from a Republican standpoint and a Democratic standpoint. You're going to have 40, 50 million people that are going to turn out and vote for this guy uh, in two weeks. And if he loses, there will be recriminations within the party. I mean, there's going to have to be a reckoning among folks who hold Fred Hyatt's view versus the folks who agree with Donald Trump on some of these big issues that have fueled his campaign. Uh, Tom, you know, you mentioned it, Portman in Ohio. He's, he's going to win. He's well ahead. But there are a couple of states that you also mentioned in Pennsylvania, Pat Toomey, and in New Hampshire specifically, Kelly Ayotte running mm -hmm. for the Senate. And I don't know about Pennsylvania per se. Maybe you can help me out with that. But there's a, a watershed line with Kelly Ayotte. She can maybe withstand a five or six point difference uh, if Hillary Clinton carries the state, which I think she's going to really carry New Hampshire, but anything beyond six points, Kelly Ayotte is gone. What, how does that apply to people like Pat Toomey and other states where the ra Senate races are close? No, it's a great point, Mike, and it's, it's true. Historically speaking, it is, t it is a hard ask for to have Senate candidates run six, seven, eight points better than the top of the ticket. It just is really, really hard. It doesn't happen very often, historically speaking. So I think Pat Toomey's in the same boat. And as we've talked about this before, I mean, he as Donald Trump has lost ground in those Philly suburbs with yep. college-educated white women, you know, Pat Toomey needs those voters. He's going to have to have them split ticket for him to vote. Mm -hmm. If they vote for Hillary Clinton or somebody else or even don't vote at the top of the ticket, he still needs them to, to vote for him if right. he's going to pull this out. It's a tough, it's a ben, tough ask. real quick. One of the underreported facts about the Senate race is that each Senate campaign, to its everlasting credit, has its own get-out-the-vote operation. Right. One of the really interesting factors here will be split-ticket voting. Mm -hmm. How yeah. Hillary Clinton, does she turn out mm -hmm. Republican Senate voters? And does the Republican National Committee turn out Democrats? Tom Bevan, thank you. I was going to ask you about Texas, but Nick would have laughed at me, so I didn't. Coming up, forces grind toward Mosul, trying to free that city from the grips of the Islamic State.